I'm now 55 years old and have run the Iditarod 21 times along with many, many other sled dog races. I just recently came back from Norway where there's a thousand kilometer sled dog race. There's races in Minnesota and Wyoming and there's even races in Argentina and Chile and uh, um, South Korea has a sled dog race now. This is not unique to Alaska, but um, Alaska has been a focal point. For me, Ala Alaska serves to dog mushing what Nashville serves to country music. I know there's country music fans in San Diego, but if you really want to immerse yourself in country music, you're going to go to Nashville. And if you want to immerse yourself in dog mushing, you'll come to Alaska. Tr trip right into a sled dog race when I came back to our small community at Denali National Park. I mean real small. 170 people live there today, year round, and back then it was closer to 30 or 40. So imagine me, a 20-year-old who had just come back from 20, uh, three months in a tent with nine dogs that had uh, been my only companionship, and I was happy about that. Um, I came back and ran into a, a flyer for a sled dog race. The local bar in Healy, Alaska had a a little sign that said sled dog race and I thought wow my dogs have been out on the trap line and hunting and I've trained them to sit and stay and they're, the, they're so good at what we do and I had a giant wooden sled but I thought I, I used to be competitive I used to play football in college and I loved competitive sports why not enter my team of trap line sled dogs into a sled dog race on his wall was his memorabilia his holster his harness or his halter for his horse and he always wore cowboy boots and a cowboy hat he had left that life behind and these was was his memorabilia one of the pieces of memorabilia was a big bull whip something he had used for moving angry cattle or something but I had seen as a small boy that the only sled dog and I had seen was Sergeant Preston and in the drawings in Jack London books all the dog mushers had this great big whip that they would use to encourage the dogs and shock them into um, excitement and I thought well if I'm gonna be in a race I ought to try this <laughs> well there's only one week till race day from arriving with my dog team on a, a weekend the next weekend was this dog race and it took me a couple days how to keep from taking my ear off in legs's <laughs> front yard as I would try this thing and uh, somehow the idea of trying it with the dogs before the race just didn't cross my mind <laughs> I thought, they'll figure it out. Besides, the, 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 whole, um, the whole element of surprise may be the biggest excitement I could possibly want, you know, the, from my, my sled dogs. Well, anyway, I showed up to start of this sled dog race. My dogs have been trained to be like Luke here on the trap line. You don't want them barking and pulling your sled when you're walking around doing your work. So they would lay there quietly and they had been trained and chastised for being too noisy they knew what to do but to come into this parking lot full of barking screaming sled dogs that wanted to go like mad and were tied to trucks that were just pulsing with the, the energy of trying to get out on the trail my dogs were looked pretty baffled in fact they looked more like a, a small herd of deer in the headlights of your car I wondered if this was going to work at all but I remembered I had this bullwhip that I could <laughs> get their attention with. <laughs> I hitched up my dogs. They moved me up to the start line. 17 teams would be in this 17 mile race. I had also decided that my great big trap line trail sled that was designed to carry hundreds of pounds of gear would be way too big for this race. So I had borrowed from someone I didn't know well, a little racing dog sled that was more like a shopping cart on skis. <laughs> but I've always, like I said, I always thought, I, oh, who needed to practice with it? I mean, it, <laughs> I've always been pretty athletic and quick to learn, and I thought, I didn't have a lot of time, so I put my bull whip in this little shopping cart and hooked my bewildered looking team to the front of them and they moved me to the start line as they moved me up there I mean this has got a 
homemade paper banner that says start and finish, drooped on a couple of cedar or spruce poles. The guy with a timing watch has got a beer in one hand and a stopwatch <laughs> in the other. And his, his VB Arctic bunny boots aren't laced up, you know, and he's, go. And uh, he's telling us when to go. And anyway, my, I wondered if my dogs were even take off. They watched a bunch of teams take off ahead of them. And sure enough, when my turn to go was given to us, they took off like a bolt of lightning. I had never seen this in them. It's like they had been learning. What, all these teams are taking off ahead of them. Where were they going in such a hurry? But we ought to find out. <laughs> and they took off. And all of a sudden, I'm hanging on to a, a grocery cart <laughs> at about 20 miles an hour. And whoa, no, I just trying. This thing, was, I felt like if I leaned wrong, it would just be crumpled in my hands. And, but I'm starting to get my balance and going, oh, man, I don't know. And I remember looking in my sled bag going, yeah, like I'm going to try to make these dogs go any faster. I can barely stay on as it is. I just went, I'm putting that bow back on Legs' wall and I'll never touch it because I, will, I clearly don't want anything to do with it. But this is when I have to make a confession that I'm, I'm very competitive. And as the miles went by, I became a little better on the sled and realized, woo, if I turn my hips just like this, I slide around the corners. And then I can do this, I can do this. And pretty soon I'm thinking, well, I could try the whip. <laughs> I was actually passing teams. My trapline dogs were like, what the heck is that little thing you hooked onto the back of us? We can really fly now. And they're just flying down the trail. I'm passing these teams and I'm deciding this, this is fun. I want to do this some more. So somewhere around midway in the 17 miles, I had decided that I was going to become a sled dog racer. I had what it took. I had my, I just believed I had what it took. Don't roll your eyes at me. <laughs> anyway, I did, I, I did look at the bullwhip, and I remembered how my ear was in really at high risk while I was learning, and I thought, you know, there's too much brush, too many trees. There's no way I'm going to try this at 18 miles an hour with all this brush, and I'm, I'm going to leave it, even though I think it would have been fun. But lo and behold, the last couple miles, the trail came out of the woods and out of the brush and onto a lake. And on the lake was a, an old wooden chair that the race organizers had put out there, a high back wooden chair. And on it, they had made a cardboard sign with a magic marker that said, race finish line, two miles. I've learned now that's pretty common that they're going to tell you how, how far it is to the finish in case you want to pour it on. Make sure you know you're on the right trail. And I thought, cool. But I also thought, whoo, out on the lake. There's no brush. There's no trees. I can try the whip. So I reached down in my sled bag, and I pulled it out and uncoiled it, and it zipped out behind me and starts dragging and slithering behind me as I'm going down the trail holding on with one hand. I remember looking back and thinking, it looked like an Arctic anaconda chasing me. <laughs> I had remembered legs that the, the guy who told me how to use the whip had told me to um, make sure you get it way back and straight, and then when you sling it forward, you got to crack it just right and get your wrist to make this pop that would give them that slap of noise that would make them shoot off like rocket ships or so I thought <laughs> anyway so I decided oh, okay, I'm gonna give it a try I'm out in the lake two miles of finish I'm having a blast dogs are having fun let's give this a try now slithering out behind me I decided the time was right I leaned forward and tried to crack the whip forward and it yanked to a stop and pulled me backwards and now, I just, for a split second, I just about got loose of my sled. Something had grabbed my, like, like a fish had grabbed your fishing lure. And I turned, as I'm still moving 15 miles an hour, to, to see the chair now in the air. 